Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Florian Leitner Fischer. I'm a professor for computer science and specializing in embedded systems. And on this channel, we talk about the fascinating world where software meets hardware. Today, I want to tackle a big question that I've been asked by students, by colleagues and people in the industry, and that is, is embedded systems still a good career choice in 2026? So let's break this down together. I'll give you the honest picture, where the opportunities are, where the challenges are, what skills you need to stay ahead in 2026 and onwards. But first, let's clarify what we mean by embedded systems. We're talking about computers that don't look like computers. Microcontrollers, chips, boards that sit inside your car, your washing machine, your drone, your coffee maker, your medical devices, even a smart toaster. So they're tightly embedded with hardware. The field covers both hardware and software. So you need to know both to really be a good embedded software or embedded systems engineer. Often with constraints that we have there, like low power, limited memory, real-time requirements and very high reliability because quite often we are using the products in a safety critical environment. So while software engineering in general may make people think of cloud apps, web apps, distributed systems, embedded engineers work at the invisible but critical layer that makes all of that technology possible. Now, is this still a good career in 2026? Let's talk about the market trends. The truth is demand is growing. Every industry is getting smarter, more connected. Cars today are basically computers on wheels. Medical devices are turning into connected diagnostic tools. And industry 4.0 factories rely heavily on embedded controllers. According to market reports, the global embedded system market is projected to keep expanding, driven by electric vehicles, IoT, robotics, aerospace, and even AI chips. So in terms of demand, yes, embedded systems is absolutely still relevant and growing. Even though some of the industries we talked about, like automotive, seem to be in decline right now, the jobs that are growing within the industry are still the ones that are focusing on embedded systems. But, of course, here's the nuance. The type of embedded engineer that companies want is evolving as well. It's no longer enough just to know how to write bare metal C code for a microcontroller. You still need that foundation. But companies increasingly look for hybrid skills. C and C++ for performance critical code. Python for testing and automation. Knowledge of real-time operating systems like FreeRTOS, Sapphire, QNX. Familiarity with hardware description, debugging with oscilloscopes, logic analyzers. And importantly, understanding communication protocols, CAN, SPI, I2C, Ethernet, Bluetooth Low Energy, and so on. And altogether paired with a fundamental and very good understanding of software engineering practices, engineering practices, systems engineering, requirements engineering, because quite often embedded systems are used in a very process-centered world like automotive, like aerospace. And even though they become more agile, they're still safety critical. So we still need a lot of documents, things, um, to, in the end, show that they are safe. And of course, let's not forget security with IoT and connected devices everywhere. Cybersecurity has become a must-have skill for embedded engineers. Of course, it's not all sunshine and roses. Let's be real, embedded systems can be challenging. Deadlines are tight, debugging is painful, and you often work with hardware that is incomplete or undocumented or not yet even completely existing. Tools can be expensive and sometimes you're the bridge between the hardware and software teams for the application layer, 
which means you need very strong communication skills, not just technical ones. Also, compared to trendy software jobs like web development, salaries in Embedded might not always look as high at the first glance. But in specialized industries like automotive, aerospace and medical, compensation can be excellent. So what about the long term? I think Embedded is one of the most future-proof career paths. Why? Because while frameworks, programming languages and front-end libraries come and go, the fundamental skills of working close to hardware, understanding timing, resource constraints and reliability, safety, security, these never go out of style. In fact, with the rise of AI and the edge energy efficient chips and real-time robotics, the need for embedded engineers who can optimize software for limited hardware is increasing. These are skills that a large language model or a code generator can just replace easily. So if you are a student or somebody who now is selecting what you should study or a young engineer wondering whether to jump into embedded systems in 2026, my advice is absolutely yes, but with a growth mindset. Don't just stop at the microcontroller tutorials. Learn how your code interacts with the hardware. Learn networking, learn security, and get comfortable with open source RTOS platforms. Also, build projects, share them, maybe even contribute to open source. That's what will set you apart. At the end of the day, embedded engineers are the people who make sure the physical world and the digital world actually connect. And that role is only becoming more important. All right, that's my take on whether embedded systems is still a good career choice in 2026. Spoiler, yes it is and it's getting more exciting every year. And now, of course, I'm interested in your take. What do you think? Where are embedded systems going to in the next years? Let me know in the comments below. Also, I will now start to make videos more frequently again. So if you have questions that you want me to cover in one of these videos, please also put those questions in the comments below. If you like this video, found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel or do both and share it with anyone who's thinking about a career in tech or in embedded systems. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.